by Finals Fever. We're here thanks to the Brewery Fresh Carlton Draft. Malloy, Ma and Pang are here. We've got a huge show coming up. We cannot wait. Mickey, it was a dream come true for Mick Malloy tonight. The great Richmond legend, Jim Jess, is oh, going to join us. The ghost. Show. From our 1980 Premiership side. And it, one of the all-time greats at the Richmond Football Club. God, I love watching him play. It was just He was a super fantastic. player. And a man whose career has been what synonymous, a boot. It's synonymous with... He could kick it. A man whose career has been synonymous with Premiership success, whether it be a player or as mm. a coach, is going to be joining us well. Currently, the Essendon coach, of course, Johnny Worsfold, is going to join us on the show as well. He, He's great. Has, has he not been involved in all three of their premierships? My word, he once has. As a My player, word. Twice, captain, and twice. Yeah, as player, once as coach. Once as coach. Yeah, yeah. No. No. Super, super good. Top stuff. Glad so we, we're glad, doing... we, glad we sorted that out. Yeah, right, I've got in the stats right. Um, um, so we're, what we're else in, do you want to know? We're, ask, ask me anything. We're, we're, right, what's his middle name? Herbert. <laughs> Not her, I hope it is. Uh, I don't think it's sick around the end. Stop it, Toby. Hey, it's not just about Toby Green. Toby. It, it is. I said. Right, Toby. Toby. What are you, right. Toby? Oh, no. <laughs> you want to get kicked Bad by Toby, Toby. Green. I want you to get kicked right. by Toby. Yeah, that is going to happen. Back by night. Hey, uh, it's all about the winners and occasionally about the losers this time of year. How good was it last year? Melbourne, back in. First final success for 12 years. Great scenes. Great relief. It was brilliant, wasn't it? Max Gorn's her father there. That's nice. Oh, no. and, and his mother as well. So the thing is, it was a big night, big night for uh, big night for Melbourne, mate. Th thousands of butlers and au pairs had their night off. What else? Have a look at this guy. It's one final hard nut. <laughs> he thinks he's won the granny, that bloke. <laughs> He got nowhere to go. It just shows you how emotional no, it's great. things are it's great. Hey, out there right now. And of course, you know, the pies, they, they were beaten yeah, but unbowed yeah. over there in Perth. No, they, 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 they were lived brave, them. mate. And hey, look, and the suburbs of Melbourne are better. When you see the passion of the Collingwood supporters, black and white all over the joint, it's great for Melbourne, it's great for footy, it's great for the finals. I like that one, Mickey. We bleed black. Can I just say, if, <laughs> if you do bleed black. <laughs> See a doctor. <laughs> that's not that's not normal behaviour. No. That's all I'll no. say. But that's no. great news. That was no. Do you know what? It's always good to see fans getting involved and going over the top <laughs> like they do. Um, have a listen to this interview with those Collingwood fans. It's gorgeous. Why do you put up so many decorations? To what? shit to shit my neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> that's great, isn't it? I have a feeling you may have been shitting your neighbours before you put the... <laughs> Why don't we like Collingwood supporters? Yeah. No, that, yeah. I mean, the team was brave, the supporters are passionate. That reporter by he did a great job. Uh, he, I'm glad he, he wanted to know more about the decorations and, really? um, and the lengths that the, those fans went to to decorate their house. Oh, have right. a listen. Subscribe. You've got a beautiful bar at the back. Yes. Where did you get the, the bar stools from? From Victoria Park. How did you get them? Stole them. I, lo I love the way she says it. Like, what else would I have done? <laughs> what, there's other options? <laughs> so, hey, all credit goes to West Coast, of course. Well done, because guys. They're through hey. the Eagles and through the prelim, of course. Yeah, but, you know, well done. Hey, th there thing. was a lot of merit in the Collingwood performance. I wouldn't be writing the pies off yet against a wall of opposition over there at Perth Stadium. Players that is a home ground advantage. Oh, it's massive, it's mate. The, play the Collingwood players came back and said it was like 50% louder than the Anzac Day crowd. They were booing for free kicks during the anthems. <laughs> you know what I mean? They don't... They they do not muck around in the great state yeah, of Colin, Western Australia. Colin and Play said they couldn't hear themselves within you know, sort of five or ten metres of one another. Although, the new stadium, apparently, you just can't hear anything. Almost impossible to hear. There's yeah, that's only right. one bloke they could hear the whole time. Is that right? Yep. <laughs> 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 I'm not sure whether that's his face or a heat map. I, 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 God love Eddie Maguire and, I, and, and his sons there, who too. One of whom was on the phone ringing that number. They put up on the scoreboard for antisocial behaviour. <laughs> No, he, he's, um, he is president. a committed he, president. He, he, continu he continued to be rope pull upon return from yeah, Perth, sure. of course, what because the, well, the final scheduling was uh, laid out for the next couple of weeks, of course, and if Collingwood get through to the preliminary final, they're going to be doing it off a six-day break, uh, and he, he wasn't happy about that. He wasn't happy about <laughs> it at all. He wasn't happy. He wasn't happy. 
If you no, flip the, the preliminary finals, every team gets a seven-day break. For God's sake, mate, you're going to disadvantage three teams going into a grand final. Now, that's the president of the football club. You can only imagine... Now, that's not very nice, is it? <laughs> hey, just... Oh, stop yourself. Oh, look at the look on your face. Just don't be upset. We've got some people in here who aren't big Triple M fans. Relax, mate, all right? <laughs> um, no, no. Well, Eddie, of course, has a good point. He's very, very... He's furious, but if he's... That's the president. Yep. So you can only imagine how the football department and the coach, uh, Nathan Buckley, you can only imagine how furious they are at the scheduling. No, the football department doesn't have a problem with it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there you go. Hey, as is always the case, the two beaten teams in the first week of the finals come under pretty intense scrutiny. Questions about both, you know, where the health of the list and the list management, the future going forward for both Geelong and Sydney has come under a fair bit of scrutiny for the two of them. A lot of discussion this oh, week. You're the, you're the actual pundit. What have you got to say about those oh, well, two teams? I mean, we could go into a great deal of debt. They're both ageing lists. They need to probably start to replenish and restock with a bit of youth. Are you surprised at all that two teams that snuck into the eight went out in the first round? <laughs> No, I'm not overly surprised, okay, to be no. honest, no. Any they, didn't, they didn't cover themselves. Sydney was a bit disappointing, I would have thought. Yeah, and and I, you could feel that in the coach's box. It really? was John Longmire, really. I mean, tried to... He's thinking here. I think he's just trying to evaporate into thin air. And... I'm gone. And he's now in the car park on his way home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not a good sign. Is it? That's, not a good that's sign. never a good sign, I'm afraid. That's a very bad sign. So, what other news, Mandy? No, all, well, well, all the talk now turns to trade talk for a lot of the teams that are out of competition. Six are still well and truly alive. We now know that, speaking of the Swans, that Gary Rowan and Dan Hanabry have informed the club that no, they right. want to seek their futures elsewhere. And the big story today, and this has been one of the big talking points, Jared Polick uh, has said that North Melbourne's his club of choice and, choice and will be continuing his career at Arden Street. So that's pretty big news from a player movement perspective. It's very big news. Follow-up question, if you don't yep. mind. Yes, please. Who's Jared Pollack? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> this, that Norse, um, is that Norse big fish? Who? You don't know who Jared Pollack He's played 106 games at AFL level. You don't know who Jared Pollack is. 106 you're on a, games? You're on a, you're on a footy, national footy show and you don't know who Jared Pollack is. That's, that's disgrace. He's played 106 games, mate. For who? <laughs> <laughs> Well, look, a couple with Brisbane and the rest with we Port Adelaide. Come on, you boys, you need your lift. Hey, it's not just the players who are um, changing clubs. Who else is? Well, there's oh. a lot of movement in the coaching ranks, Sam. As and especially assistant coaches. My word, there. Oh, once, wow. Once again, Andy. You're all over this. Yeah, you've buried the lead. <laughs> and I'm talking, I'm talking about the news that Marty Matner... Moose. Is that his name? Yeah, that's his name. Marty Matner. <laughs> Marty Matner is, is off to the um, to the Crows. Correct. Joining them as an assistant coach. And oh, I, I'm, he's a bombshell. I'm all over, no, Mickey, I'm all over this because he's a... He's a well, he's well sought after in the um, in the coaching oh. ranks. There was a big uh, a bidding war between Port Adelaide and um, the Crows, the Crows. Yep. and I believe that obviously he's gone with the Crows. And if you listen to Marty Matner here, you, I can I think I can see why he ended up going with the Crows. Right. Huh. Mate, why did you choose Adelaide over Port? Um, again, probably um, oh, spoken to the Crows more, and, and probably in the end it was just that. They had an offer on the table, um, and there was, you know, there was really nothing else. <laughs> now, oh, okay, it's it's a difficult it's, choice. It's yeah. well, it's a it's it's an age-old choice isn't it, young, when you got when you've got like an offer and nothing. <laughs> what do you do? I think you something the, or nothing. <laughs> take the offer. But anyway, it's yeah. great news. He's going. To the, he's going to the Crows, and I was very interested uh, to hear him talk about his role <laughs> right. uh, at the Adelaide Crows. Okay. Very, have a listen to his role. Okay. I'm really happy with the role, and that was probably the main reason was that I chose the Crows. Was the um, the role was exactly what I wanted. Well, hopefully getting back in that system, but also too the role of working with this club and and getting back involved as well. What's what is the role? Uh, well, like I said, we'll work that out, but. <laughs> Whatever the role is, he is perfect. <laughs> he is. Things, are going, hey, things are going beautifully in the Adelaide Crows. Don't worry about that. Hey, we've got to get it. Hey! 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 Toby! 
Jesus. He's starting to shoot. Idiot. Gee, you fucking madman. Can you look after him, please? It's legal, apparently. That's what not yes, it's legal. Right. I don't get his face. That, that <laughs> hurt. That actually hurts. All right, all right. Harden up. It takes up. It does. <laughs> hey, uh, don't go anywhere. We will come back. Uh, it'll hurt our next guest, too, I reckon. John Walsfold's going to be joining us. Show. Okay. Contributions via our social media platforms. Love the General there. Assembly. We do love the General Good Assembly. Part. We love our feedback on social media as well. Sure. Yes, and plenty of feedback uh, for our point of the year. Oh, you yeah. do. <laughs> Feedback's a, another word for hate mail. It really is. But go with it. Well, yeah. point of the year, the point of the week point slash the, year. You don't even so know you, the name of your own city. No. What is it? What is it? Describe it to us. What happens? Point, point, well, for too long in this game, uh, <laughs> in this game that we love, we've just focused on uh, on the goals. Correct. It's, That's hard. Well, it's time now, and this year we've been doing it, we're celebrating some of the great points that are kicked every week. Bravo to you, sir. Thank you very much. And what constitutes a great point? Like well, just all the skills of the game, you know what I mean? You can the gather, the, the hard running, the, the balks. You can do everything with a, with a good point. Slot, and slotting it through the big stick and little stick. Yes. Wow. Stop helping me. <laughs> so, we've seen some greats. They're all in the running. And, and uh, in a couple of weeks... <laughs> in, a couple of, in a couple of the weeks, uh, the point of the year will be revealed. But we've got a late entry uh, on the weekend. Lockie Whitfield from, the, uh, from uh, GWS kicked a cracker. Have a look at this. Gives it off and gets it back. Yep. That's hard running. And then from the boundary line, absolutely nails it. That is one of the great... Uh, that is a good point. Well done, Lockie Whitfield. You're into the running. Like I said, like I said in a couple of weeks, hopefully Lockie Whitfield could be here collecting the trophy, the point of the year trophy. Have a look at that. It is. Is that it, is it? Why is there a jockey on it? <laughs> what is that? What is well, we, we, who wears that? It's not an outfit of it. It's like a gunman. We, that's, that's the trophy for putting around. Don't forget about, really don't forget about Torp of the Year. Oh, God, which God. is another <laughs> fantastic. That's not in yeah, shot. Hey, yeah. Can you go wide to get the whole trophy in place? <laughs> and of course, Torp of the Year's already been named. And what? it goes to Jack Darling, of course, of Torp of the Year. Yeah. Has been one. Oh, you don't know the name of your own oh, Shut up, mate. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Harder than it looks. Uh, we'll, we'll cut that out <laughs> when we go live. <laughs> <laughs> Toby, it's been, it's, been, it's been named and won, and the winner is Jack Darling. He couldn't be here to pick it up. He wanted to be, but uh, here he is uh, from Perth. <laughs> Thank you so much for wanting me to talk the year. Well deserved. I absolutely got onto that one. I'm glad I won this prize and not point of the week. On behalf of Jack Darling, I accept this magnificent trophy. We are well and truly on the road to the Premiership, the Premiership glory. Our first guest tonight is a man who has been followed by Premiership throughout his illustrious career, whether it be as a player or as a coach, please make him welcome. John Walsfold, everybody! <laughs> Thanks for coming on, Wolf. Oh! Hey! <laughs> Oh, Toby, sorry about that. Sorry Toby's about gone that. berserk yeah. tonight. We're really unhappy with his antics. You yeah, watch those uh, tough half forwards. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, those high half forwards that do it. You might have been able to work him out and deal with him, I reckon, back in the day. You would have mm. sort of sorted him out. Yeah, I would have snapped it. You would have too. You would have too. Hey, Wush, I've got to ask you something just right off the top. Let's get this out of the way. Oh. Is your middle name Herbert? <laughs> <laughs> Any chance yeah. that that's the? Why are you laughing? <laughs> it's, uh, that's it's my not... feelings. What is your What is your middle? Name? My middle name is Herbert. Yes, <laughs> it's not. No, it's not. Richard. 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 Yeah. Richard. Okay, there you go. Uh, Herbert's better. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, Wush. Oh, are we allowed to call you Wush? 
Of course you are, yeah. Well, John. Um, or you heard it if you want. Your, your, your career, you've been, I mean, your career in terms of premiership success has been remarkable. Twice coach of the West Coast. Look Eagles. at this. And there's a couple of Eagle fans. Got a big crowd. shiner there too. Remarkable stuff. And then you go back there and you have the success as a coach as well with the club that you love so much. Satisfying the other four. I imagine they're different coaching to playing, obviously. Was one more... Um, oh, they're obviously all remarkably satisfying, and um, but you know I always say playing is what we love doing as kids growing up, playing the game and being out there with your mates, and uh, that's what's really special about it. But coaching, still a very proud moment, yeah. and also um, great feeling to. Uh, having played in a premiership, to know what those players had just achieved together, uh, that special moment for them. So as a coach, it's just probably more proud of uh, what that achieved yeah. and, and what they get to share. Going back in 92, it was the first time the Premiership Cup had ever been taken out of Victoria Look by a winning team. This there you are, crossing the border. Yeah. How significant yeah. was this for you, for the group and for the people of Western Australia? Did you he, did he get a sense for what it meant to it? Uh, yeah, well, certainly uh, post-game was when it really hit home. Uh, yeah. you know, going over there, we were just obviously nervous and focused on, on having a real crack oh, at Very it, stylish there too, John. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> no, I set the standard there too. But, um, <laughs> Uh, it was very, very big. Yeah, I mean, that's things that you don't think about. But you know, when they come, the the media people come down to you on the plane and say, "We're going to cross the border soon. Yeah. We want you in the cockpit to get a shot of it." And I'm thinking, "Who's going to know?" <laughs> it's not like we're looking out the window and seeing the line there as we go over it. But uh, we did those things. We got home, and Perth was uh, obviously, um, you know, extremely excited about what had happened. Historical moment. First, first time the club. Oh, ever. Left ever. The, left Not bad state. for you, and John. Of course, you're you're used to being up that end of the plane as well, Mickey. So, it's um, <laughs> interesting that uh, that's 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 um, John's uh, playing uh, coach, a uh, playing career. Uh, now, of course, current coach of Essendon. Of course. Um, you know, people figure because it was a cracking finish to the year, Essendon. They were on it was. fire. Can't, people didn't want to you know, yep. uh, But it was a pretty tough start. I think after eight games, John, you were two and six. Yes. Um, so tough times. But I, and and you were under the pump. Uh, Mari wanted you gone. <laughs> um, John, you know that's not true, John. No, and no, I, the, I remember. The, I remember on this show, the media was was coming at uh, John pretty, pretty hard. Yeah, there was blood in the water. There was, but I did like that at press conferences. John was very, very uh, strong in your responses. Now, there's not much more we can do, but we can do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you like to keep things simple, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> what did you do, mate? What did you do? Because you turned it around. Uh, yeah, we well, we added a lot of stuff to our program. <laughs> um, yeah. The main thing we added was oh, things nothing. Now, is it? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was stuff. <laughs> no, it was, uh, we, we just stuck to what we were doing, as in um, we had a real focus for how we wanted to play, and it hadn't been going well, but we were keen to understand... Uh, uh, it was new to a lot of the group, a yeah. lot of the, uh, some new players in, and um, yeah, the players stayed very focused on working hard to make it happen. And, yeah. and as it turned, they all of a sudden got that confidence. And yeah. did away. you ever lose faith, or is it your job not to lose faith? Uh, well, you certainly question everything. You know, there's no doubt. You get uh, you, you get um, some doubt, but and you question it, but you lean on the people around you. You are the coaches, uh, the leadership playing group about is there something we're missing here or we do need to change and uh, from that we then set the pathway and, and stick at it. Well you certainly did and, and it did turn around. I have to say I think this interview is going quite well yeah, I think because well, yeah. I've seen some with you that can get difficult and a little uncomfortable even <laughs> um, like this one. <laughs> Well, I mean, all encompassing. But I mean, the coach's box was mentioned, but it was it was also mentioned that as by whom? Well, it has been mentioned by whom? Well, in the media. So by whom? Well, everyone that's everyone. involved. Yeah. So who? Uh, well, obviously, no one club. No one What's your question? Man. Well, the, it was to do with communication. Um, What's I mean, your question? The, is there communication as to the standard that you would like? Between whom? <laughs> He was genuinely shooting himself that way. <laughs> no, you, you could see that you were serious. <laughs> at, at that moment, you'd had enough. Was yeah. that the moment you went, you know what, I'm over this? Well, yeah, look, our normal weekly press conference, there's the usual two or three journos that trek out to Tullamarine to do yeah. the press conference. And when the heat gets on, all the big guns come out. <laughs> yes. I just didn't recognise that guy. <laughs> 
I think he was a bit flat. Right, no, I right. think he was at the end of that. Get your question hey, we get, right. Tom. I'll try my very hardest. We'll get you over here in a moment to talk about your career. But you are here. We'd love to get your thoughts on the finals, if you don't mind, the two semi. So let's have a look at the first one. Saturday night, it's going to be decided. Uh, Collingwood up against uh, the Greater Western Sydney. Here we Sydney. go. It's going to be a great game of football. It's going to be a great Channel 7, game. MCG, 6.30pm. Let's have a look at the changes. Two beautiful words for Collingwood. No change. They go in. Well, they... Why would you change a losing team? <laughs> It's Murray. an interesting change. I mean, Josh Kelly hasn't come up. Harry Perryman was outstanding last week, the young fella. Ryan Griffin comes in. Lockie Keith comes back in against his old side. John, your thoughts on this one? Who's going to win and why? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm leaning towards GWS. I think uh, they've been building their momentum really strongly yeah. through the second half of the year, and they're getting those players back. Uh, you have some concern about the players that were back in last week and how sore they can pull up from a final especially. Yep. You, you pull up sore from a normal game first up yep. uh, from a final. They could be carrying a fair bit of soreness. They'll that won't certainly slow them down at the start of the game but it may impact them over the course of the game. When you say players, who? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Toby, I was just asking a question. Yeah, no, I think uh, Toby Green may have a bit of groin soreness. <laughs> From all the splits. He's really getting yeah, up there. Yeah. Hey, I put it to you, if yeah. Mason Cox has a, a week like he did uh, last week, not only will he be dropped, he could be deported. <laughs> <laughs> is that, is that a, fair, a fair comment? Colling Collingwood have been uh, sensational all year, know, where they've come from. Um, so, big job. Uh, we know GWS have uh, been thereabouts the last couple of years. They'll be really pumped up mm. to, uh, to make the most of this opportunity, but uh, I'm leaning towards the Giants. Okay. Okay. Hey, we're going to go to a break. Before we do, I just want to say, it's that time of year. It's difficult at the end of the year, isn't it? When you've got to uh, maybe release players like, like you've had to do uh, at Essendon before their time. Brendan Goddard I'm talking about, he may not necessarily want to have gone. And it's been a big story because we've seen scenes like this all year where he seems to be, what would you call that? Is he yeah. remonstrating with his teammates? No, he's pretty stern, uh, honest conversations with the, with the teammates. Everyone's wanted yeah. to know, but I think you uh, settled it all and said it uh, correctly when you described it like this. Uh, my understanding would have been that um, they would have been sharing a learning opportunity with each other. <laughs> yeah. there's, been, there's been quite a lot of learning on this program this year, <laughs> I, I have to point out. Um, I've, I've, learnt, I've learnt not to expect uh, Andy to ask a question in under 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> when John oh, yeah. Warsold's around, I'm going to be doing that. Can you stick around? Can you stick around? Yeah, absolutely. We're going to get you. We've got another big gun coming yeah. on. Well, I'm very excited about it. He's very excited. We still want you to stay involved so in the program. There. John Warsold's going to be over come on. a little bit later on. When we come back, don't go anywhere. One of the greats of the Richmond Footy Club, Jim Jess, <laughs> is going to... Footy Club through 223 games and a premiership. Yes! Star he was. Please make you welcome, Jimmy Jess, everybody. Let's go. He's seven. Good on him. And he looked good. He looks you, good. <laughs> you, you undeniably look like Jim Jess, isn't it? Uh, for, for lacking a bit up here in the. No, no, you, didn't, you beard, never had that much anyway, mate. No, I suppose. Right. No, up here, I didn't. You look anyway. great, no. though. No, it was long and dishevelled. It was Absolutely. beautiful. You were magnificent. <laughs> well, let's have a... The ghost. There'll be, there'll be some people, not many, there'll be some people who won't remember you as a player. Uh, so let's have a look at the highlights. I mean, he could do everything. Now. This bloke, he was good in the air. He was long on the foot. Some of the torps, which we'll show you later, are as big as I've ever seen in the game. Here we are. Mobile. Is that, mobile. 19, is that 1980? That'll go pretty close, I reckon. In your mind, it is. Yeah. And here we go. Barry Rowling's there. Jimmy honks onto one and bang! It's right, -o, right. -o. It's like it was yesterday. Jimmy! 
Jimmy, is there a chance? How close were you to never, never playing for Richmond? Because you were in the St Kilda zone, weren't you? And they had you down there and you had to break the news to Jeansy that you didn't want to play. How did that go? Oh, well, he, he thought that I looked like the wild man from Borneo. Right, actually. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and he said he'd coming down to, uh, to have a go at St Kilda or not. And uh, I needed to make some money, so I decided between St Kilda and Shearing. So I, I took Shearing. <laughs> <laughs> I like, like, where'd the ghost come from? Oh, uh, Tommy, who, yeah. Who well, it's, yeah, Tommy Hafey started because, I, you know, well, okay, I, was, I was very shy. And uh, yeah. I'd turn up at training and sneak in, get changed in lock of 47 and avoid eye contact with yeah, everybody and yeah. be gone and straight out. after you're out of there. So, And plus a dishevelled look, I suppose. And Indeed. Yeah, let's, so let's... you look like the ghost and you act like one too. Fair call. Let's have a look at 1980, uh, which at the time was the greatest grand final winning margin ever. And even better than that, it was against Collingwood. <laughs> and there he is. This was a spectacular day for, for Richmond fans everywhere. What do you remember of the game, Jim? Oh, just beating Collingwood by a long way. Which, yeah. which, <laughs> it was over early. Which it was over early, didn't yeah. Sing, they didn't sing the themes on the half time. Bruce, no, Bruce no, Monteith, well, the captain, who started on the bench that day. He did, yeah, yeah. And uh, no, it was just uh, just a highlight for me. Obviously, you know, it's, it's what you dream of, what everyone dreams of. And to be so far in front at half time, I thought, well, it's, it's sort of a bit anticlimactic, I suppose, because you're looking around, yeah, seeing where the fan we are, and we're not going to lose this one. So no, absolutely. Terrific. And it, you know what it came down to the perfect preparation and what the club did. They left no stone unturned, mm. Sam. And the prep. How, I mean, when you include Jazz Ballet <laughs> as part of your <laughs> uh, part of your routine, uh, you know you're on a winner. Uh, Have a listen. Jazz Ballet was introduced into Richmond's pre-season training after the club's end-of-season visit to the United States. On that trip, Richmond players joined top American basketball teams in training where Jazz Ballet is used extensively. Have a look at those guys! <laughs> Jimmy, you can see him up in the middle, all over the shop. Personally, I'm a Zumba man. <laughs> <laughs> but now, what was What's the thing feeling on? there? Can well, you, do you remember that? Well, whose idea was it? I'm trying to forget it actually. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I reckon it must have been after uh, 80 or 80 because TJ after wouldn't let. Uh, after, after, no way TJ would let us do that. No, no, no. That. You remember? I do, unfortunately. Yeah, I tried well, to erase it from him. Well, it, it all worked out well. The, the, the team uh, led the league in hardball pirouettes that, <laughs> that year. Um, but um, that was a bit of an unusual training technique. John, as coach of uh, West Coast in 2005, <laughs> Five, I believe it was. Yes. You were Four. you liked to doing uh, unusual things at training too. Here you are with one of your. You had the boys blindfolded, John. Talk us through this. Yeah, we were doing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By the way, it didn't, it didn't always go well. No. <laughs> Seriously, what were you thinking? Uh, yeah, I, honestly, that was obviously uh, that was about um, <laughs> trust your teammates. <laughs> they won't like let you run coach. into the fence. Yeah, you know, Can I just, so say just have that absolute trust. Like that, they could still have beaten Carlton. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. That's, that's it. We'll, we'll get to 1982 in just a minute. Now you're a bit of a practical joker around the club. Fair call. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, well, I came across this bit of footage with Michael Roach. Let uh, him explain. This is on the news. Let him explain uh, what you two guys were up to. <laughs> One night of training, he put the wild pig in my locker, you know, sitting up in my locker, you know, a really wild boar. And uh, I came back from training and had to get something out of my locker. And, of course, you know, what sprung out madly trying to bite everybody was this wild pig. So, well, we're at Jimmy's car now, and I have got a couple of... Oh, there's three in it. <laughs> a couple of dead prawns, which are starting to smell quite, quite a lot. So he doesn't know about this at the moment. So I better put them back. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, the best part about this, Nick. Hey, that was the lead story on the news. <laughs> That's how much they loved their footy back then. What happened? Well, the best part about it was uh, we we're playing in Sydney. And uh, the girls decided to go to the snow, and that was a four-wheel drive. So uh, they took the they four, took the car to the snow for the weekend, <laughs> sitting in the car park over the snow for three or four days. Wow! Yeah. Hey, Jimmy, you had to be on the bugle. You could exactly. You could you could dish it out, but you had to take it on occasions as well through, throughout your career. Do you remember this one, Gary Wilson, one of the wow. slightest blokes in the game? He absolutely <laughs> flattened you this day at the MCG. Was there a, sort of some sort of backstory to to that? Oh. Uh, it probably was. Yeah. I think I might have got him the year before. Uh, and, uh, right, huh? the and, uh, yeah, and I was playing on uh, Bernie Quinlan that day and 
but as you did then, Bernie had taken a mark and I was a little bit late and giving a little tap on the back oh, of the scone right. and oh, yeah, 15 metres. But Bernie got a bit Doesn't wobbly sound and like uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit wobbly and he, he was only about 30 out and he missed it and I was pretty happy with myself yeah. for a while. And <laughs> Super boot who? Uh, after that, I didn't remember much. <laughs> you, me you mentioned Bernie Quinlan. Yeah. There's some of the other other opponents that you had, mate. They were great names oh, in yeah, the position you played. Yeah, yeah Vanda, Paul Vanda, you know, had yeah. some great tussles with him and uh, Sellers McClure, you know, fellas like that. Uh, Steve McCann, Peter Foster. There was some yeah. great centre Who did you really look forward to playing, though? Look forward to playing. Yeah, as in I'm going to I'm going to give this bike a bath today. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you and Vanderhaar would have been fun to watch, though. Yeah, like, yeah. Great era. That would have been super to watch. Yeah, yeah, he was, he was good, and the aftermatch was pretty good, too. <laughs> <laughs> I would have thought so. I, you need to know something. So, me and my mate Chowie, when we were still at school, used to catch the train from Frankston uh, up to Punt Road uh, every third week or so to yeah. watch Richmond train, and particularly to watch you kick for goal. And I remember yeah. seeing you. Uh, roost a torp from centre half back at Punt Road. It may have been wind assisted, <laughs> but down on the Punt Road end, it's one of the biggest torps I've ever seen in my life. And it, nothing gave me greater joy than yeah. seeing you really honk onto a big torp. Here's just a couple uh, for you to get a look at. Have a look at this. Just a couple of steps, whack, whack, and away. Boom, shakalaka. <laughs> and that has sailed through with plenty to spare. What about this? Look at this. Fun. I love it. No! That's unbelievable. Did you just, just, did you go, I've got this, or did you just, was it fun for you? What were you doing? Oh, it was fun. And, you know, I, I was a good kick, you know, I knew that. Yeah. And uh, I was, you know, I was confident I could get the distance on those, but uh, so it was good. <laughs> but, but actually, my best torp, yes. believe it or not, on KB's uh, 400th game, Kevin signed a black and yellow footy yes. and the club. Uh, for every player run yes. out in the ground and uh, I got to centre forward there's about 60,000 there yes. and I knew where dad sat and he was way back in the southern stand I got to centre forward and I thought I'll, I'll just bell it towards him and hope for the best you know and I, when I kicked it I, I hit it you know and I thought <laughs> well this is going to go close and I watched and watched and watched and the old man's sitting there stubby and there's a beer in that end like a glass and and it had to come down his arms went up everywhere and feeding him it went whop and hit him right on the chest <laughs> I was, I mean, yeah baby no, and that's good that's uh, it's actually, uh, it's a true story. It's and a true story in a father-son moment. It is, and, uh, you know, he had the footy on, on his uh, mantelpiece for years and gave it to the, the to Richmond Footy Club last year for the museum. So it's a true story, uh, yeah. It's a true story, mate. That's the sort of stuff we love hearing about here on the front bar, and we celebrate those sorts of uh, moments uh, in a segment that we love on the show called Fresh from the Archives. It's a story career you played at Richmond, as Mick says, the, the premiership being the, the crowning achievement. But there was at one stage during the club, when uh, at one stage in your career, when you and the club were seemed to be at loggerheads. Um, <laughs> and uh, I tell you what, this is unbelievable stuff that we found this I, week, because I'd never seen anything like The president of Richmond at the time, Barry Richardson, went on uh, live television and decided to dissect <laughs> your contract. <laughs> Jim Jess is on a contract of $57,000 a year. That's a lot of money. That's Not only, only game. Jim also is on a flat contract. If you want to be really blunt about it, and I, look, I love Jim Jess, but that's not the issue. The issue is, is that it's currently, he's had 61 kicks and 31 handballs in 10 games. Now that comes out at $425 a kick. On possessions, it's 92 possessions, which means that every time Jim just touches the ball at this stage, it's cost us $281. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. I think you're giving Barry Richardson to do my tax. <laughs> That's some good paperwork. That is extraordinary, what did, you, yeah. what did you think about, about having your contract uh, aired in public, mate? Uh, well, I wasn't that happy about it. Like, <laughs> he's thrown me under the bus, there's no doubt about that, but Bones, but he was under pressure and, uh, you know, the facts that he gave there were really distorted, actually, and at that time, the, um, you know, Cloakie and Rainsy had left, as you know, yeah, Nick and Brian right, Wood, and the right. club were in a, a disarray, and, uh, myself, Michael Roach, Dale Waitman, Mark Lee, all accepted miles, miles, miles less yeah. than what were offered at other clubs, mm. so... You know, it was just, you know, it wasn't on. And, and Bones and I... Couldn't could see you've gotten over it. Couldn't <laughs> <laughs> see that you've moved on. No, well, Bones and I could have sorted it out over a beer, but me yeah. and Sprowley might have to go back out the back room. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hey, now, can we move on? I think you're involved in one of the most infamous moments ever in uh, AFL Grand Final oh, history. Yes, and I'm talking course. about Helen D'Amico. This is the 1982 Grand Final. You were playing on Bruce Dool <laughs> at... 
at the time. And uh, there it is. Can you talk us through what you're thinking? Um, <laughs> she's, she's actually... And, and you can tell it's 1982 just by how much hair there is in the downstairs. Position. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to work no, it. No, hey. Toby. Yeah. Toby! Um, well, what were you thinking? Happy, you know. What were you thinking when you see that and you're, you're going... She, she had Bruce Dool uh, in a scarf by, yeah, and did. a headlock. What, what's going on? Well, what about me? <laughs> 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 was it all over pretty quickly? Well, did you see actually, it coming? No, well, I did see it coming, and uh, yeah, she's a star. I, I ran into her in Darwin, believe it or did not, you? years later. I did. We had a, a beer at the Nightcliff Hotel, and okay. I said, "What the hell were you thinking, Helen?" You know, and she said, "Well, I, I got there and." And uh, I looked out on the ground and looked at two scruffy-looking old blokes and I thought, well, I might as well run out to them. I feel a bit secure. You're, you remind me of my father. I go, oh, thanks for that. There are safe as ours. Hey, Mandy, come on, That was a famous moment, by the way. It was. And you, and you know that, um, that you know, people were wondering where she actually jumped the fence. Yeah. And I can tell you now, it wasn't, wasn't from the members, because you need a collar to get in the members. <laughs> <laughs> but, mate, that was an amazing, amazing uh, day. First time, yeah, I, first time I ever saw a naked woman. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. And the last time I ever saw her. <laughs> Jimmy, um, um, we, we could spend a whole lot more time with you. Hopefully we'll get she should have won the Norm Smith, by the way. <laughs> she, she, she had the biggest effect on that. Major uh, influence we lost on that. From there. Uh, thanks for coming on the show, mate. No we really appreciate hey, it. Hey, great stuff. Jimmy, yes, 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 here on the front bar. What a legend he was. Don't go anywhere. We'll get John Wilson on over here to chat about his brilliant career on the other side of this break. Johnny. How are those top? Thanks for brewery fresh calm draft. The number one tap here in Australia, John Walsfold, our very, very special guest. Time to talk the career of the great man, some wait. of the playing experts. Well, we'll get to that because uh, as good as you were on the field, you're pretty handy off the field. Do you remember this time in your <laughs> life? Hello, girls. Uh, it's the Cleo Top 50. Let's take a look. Bachelor of the Year. The Bachelor of the Year. Fold has made Cleo Magazine's annual Top 50 available males. It's not quite a Brownlow medal. I don't try and impress them with uh, any fancy lines or um, any big statements. I just try and be myself and be, you know, polite and a gentleman. There you go. How'd you go? No good. No. <laughs> no. Do you know where you came? No. 50th. 50th, I tell yeah. you. Was was that... a, uh, there's no disgrace in that because uh. it was a pretty tough year, especially when you consider yeah. who won it. That year, it's um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey. I mean, how can you compete? Oh, no, no, I did hear a whisper that there were guys out there door knocking to get votes. It was a big deal the back then, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah, it was. yeah anyway. What did you have to do? Did you have to do anything for it? Or? No. How did you get roped? No. That's not your go. How did you get yeah, roped? Yeah, no, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> don't know how I agreed do to that. Or, or, uh, in hindsight, for that interview, the, the short sleeve shirt with the tie <laughs> was the way to go. That was the, uh, the clincher. I was at work in the pharmacy. <laughs> Pharmacists wear short sleeve shirts. That's how. Clark Kent <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. you, you were a, you were a <laughs> remarkable player, you, and you carved out your reputation off sort of half back and roaming around defence. You, you know, you did it all. You're fearless and you know, uh, ballistic and powerful. Is it true that up until the point that you joined the Eagles, though, you were a genuine midfielder? You played most of your time in through the development leagues as a, as a genuine ball hunting midfielder. Yeah, I did. I played, uh, you know, as a junior. Um, in the midfield the whole time, but uh, and I played a little wow. bit of footy at uh, in the at West Coast in the on ball yep. um, for a couple of years, and then a couple of young guys called Matera and Kemp came along, and uh, <laughs> just you're going all right, John. But yeah. have, just check out the halfback flank. Yeah. <laughs> it's not too bad, down there. <laughs> if you want to keep playing with yeah, it, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, now you were, you're a premiership captain. <laughs> you're, you're a wonderful player in your own right, but you were also one of the hardest men to ever take the football field, and it seemed to be part of your job or responsibility as a leader of the side. What I like about this uh, too is these are all big hits, but they're also on very big players. So that's Dermot Brereton. Uh, there. This is unbelievable. Uh, Modra. That Modra. This is just sheer courage. Bang. That's Glenn Archer. <laughs> Did you set out to take that what are this on? One, as, as Bang. That, that's, get... that's Gary Ablett, by the way. Did that hurt? Ah, uh, that was solid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. That was solid. Uh, yeah, I just speak to you once. I think I read in a book you said you, you got hit by Gary once and you said it was the hardest hit you'd ever had on a field. And I think you got him a couple of times. Yeah, you had a couple too. of run-ins um, over the time. Yeah, I, I played on him a couple of times. but uh, And they were all completely all fair, by the way. There's, yeah, there's yeah. nothing wrong with any of that. But was that at the time you felt, I need to step up and be that role in this team? Yeah, that, it sort of developed over time where when I started at West Coast, we were uh, talked about from the east that they won't be able to play the physical nature of the game. They're, Victorian they, football. Yeah, yeah, they play yeah, on the big yeah. wide yes. uh, grounds in WA. They're uh, right. outside. They're outside teams. Oh, okay. So um, right. uh, that eventually uh, yeah, 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 it graded yeah. on me a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, but, and because that, off the field, you were, uh, everyone says it was a classic case of uh, white line fever, that you were such a mild personality, but on the field it was just a like you were being <laughs> possessed. Yeah, well, well, I don't know about that. I always felt I was in control on the field, yeah. but um, certainly saw opportunities to, to make a big impact on, uh, you know, yeah. collisions when, when players were attacking the football. So you're just saying all those things. They're just learning opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> stuff. So they, stuff. 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 stuff and learning opportunities. Yeah, that's um, it. OK, gotcha. Wait, I yeah. mentioned Gary Ablett, and you don't see, he was one of the most unruffled characters I've ever seen. Can you talk us through this halftime exchange between the two of you? Because I'm fascinated. Two alpha males who go hard <laughs> at it. Something has gone on yeah. here. Can you tell me what you're talking about? Well, oh, it's not uh, over two. He, come, he comes back for another bite here. Yeah. Oh, what's going on? Well, yeah, initially I was yelling at him from behind, hoping he wouldn't turn around. <laughs> uh, and then he stopped, and uh, I thought, now I'm in a bit of strife. So, um, <laughs> now, we had a couple of run Look, there's a police horse separating the two of you. I think... Um, Gary had run through one of my teammates in that game and yes. uh, I wasn't happy with it and really it wasn't until half time till a siren went. I got the opportunity yeah. to actually go and yeah. um, discuss it with him. Well, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it was that incident. There was another game where we, had, we were right into it at half time and really yes. going at it and uh, like had each other by the jumpers and uh, we're sort of looking at each other right in the face and I thought... I should headbutt you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was bad yeah. thought. You thought it, so, and then you did no. No, I did it. Went no. <laughs> <laughs> I did, yeah. Well, I, so, I, I, I think back in the 80s, that was a stat. <laughs> <laughs> was it? Uh, so you did? Well, I just leant into him and just gave it a nudge. And uh, as I did, I looked at him and thought, cop that, Gaz. And yeah. I could feel blood trickling down my eye. <laughs> <laughs> I come Obviously, off. times yeah, have changed, and it was a different era, and it was part of the... Yeah, not oh, that's part, what footy was back in the day. It's these, out, man. You're, these confrontations, though, they weren't... Like, the Gary Apple one's great. And, and like Nick said, you, you seem to target, you know, the heavy hitters. This, this, this shot here... Is it's, it's oh, just it's one of the great. great... It's a great footy photos. You and Alan Jakovic, who's been on this show, what's going on here, uh, John? You weren't even playing this time. <laughs> no, no, I was, I was, I was out injured. It's like injured. prisoners in an exercise yard. Yeah. That's, that's, what it, that's what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> what's happened there? Well, uh, yeah, I was injured. But I, I played a lot of junior footy with Alan, and uh, we played in the... Um, Till Cup in yep. those days, the Till yes. Cup winning side for WA together. Um, yeah, he was a South Fremantle boy where I'd grown up, so we'd okay. we're the same age and we played a lot of footy together in um, uh, representative teams. Yep. So I knew him well, but now I was teammates with his younger brother at West Coast, and in that that was the game where he kissed his brother, right. and uh, <laughs> okay. then, you know that just rolled me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so again, post game, post -game. I'm sitting in the coach's box. I can't do too much from yeah. there. So after the game, I just had a word. Had him. a word. Yeah. Had a quiet chat. Just because you're sticking around, if if we start going into territory that you're not happy with, can you just <laughs> let us know? <laughs> sure. I'll talk to Toby yeah, about that. Yeah. Yeah. If I look at you though, I think I'm going to headbutt you before. <laughs> 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 hey, um, John, you were a firebrand on the field, but off the field, like Mick said, there was, you know, there was uh, just stories about white line fever. Completely mild mannered off the, and also played in an era where players still had jobs. Away from football, the worst fold image changes to that of a mild mannered, softly spoken professional in the pharmacy business. To, to lead, you know, the 20 guys out each week is um, is a great feeling because they are such a great bunch of guys and. I can't believe he didn't win that Cleo Bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's every girl's dream to meet a chemist. Yeah. How did you manage? How, how did you manage that? So, you, yeah, that was, was that your own chemist that you were running? No, I was then? just uh, just working in there part time. Um, right. And I did my training in in that pharmacy, um, which was pretty intense. You had to do a full year full time. 
once you'd finished your studies. So that was a pretty yep. intense year, 40 hours a week in the pharmacy while I was playing footy. Do you ever head, head but a customer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, Monday was pension day. So <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to you attack a customer, oh, yeah, <laughs> Mondays. <laughs> Hey, should we have a look at the Hawks? Yeah, the let's days, do mate? that. Friday night, the uh, first of the semi finals, Hawthorne Melbourne. Will Melbourne continue to roll on? Can the Hawks bounce back? There is a bombshell out for the Hawks. Wow. We didn't see this coming. There was word this afternoon that Jager O'Meara might have had an issue, but I don't think too many of us have believed that. Well, it's come to pass that their gun midfield is out along is with the Is that a game straight. changer? It's is a that, big deal. It's a big deal. Yeah, out, he's, uh, he's in good form for them, so they'll, they'll certainly miss him. Um, Melbourne's you know, contested ball team, they, they've got a very good. strong around the contest, so they lose a player who is strong around the contest for them. What do you think? Well, yeah, I'm uh, leaning towards the, the Ds in this game. I think, uh, you know, they're, when they're up and going, they're, they're really hard to stop. They play a really exciting, fast brand of footy. And that, that did challenge uh, Hawthorne against uh, the Tigers. Um, but we also know that Hawthorne are pretty good defensively. So mm, if good. they can slow Melbourne up, they'll, they'll make it tough for them. And they're well coached by master coach Clarko, who likes to get on the guitar. He you're does. Mus you're yeah. musical. Uh -huh. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's why I was on Bachelor, clearly Bachelor. <laughs> it was the music ability. Guitar's yeah. not your forte, but, gee, you do like the keyboard. <laughs> Um, John, that's just amazing. Start the, uh, it's amazing to see. And um, geez, your, your sound engineer looks happy, by the way. <laughs> He's having a great time. And what I can't believe is that's in the coach's box. <laughs> <laughs> that really, that is. Can you hang around? Can you okay, hang around? Yeah. We're not no, done brilliant. with you. Yeah, sure, thanks. Cool, we've got more mm. things to talk to John Walsall about on the other side of the break. Mix Mouldy as well. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> John. Oh dear. What are you doing, man? Uh, did they have to talk you into this, mate? That's uh, called a sacrificial act <laughs> <laughs> for the football club. Wow, so, hey. You don't look comfortable there. <laughs> is this just me? Or are you <laughs> feeling a little awkward? Yeah. Just not in your natural no. state to be so yeah. nice and lovely, is it, really? Yeah. No. It's not that's... within your limited repertoire. Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. Right. That's beautiful. Uh, that was, uh... I hope the members appreciate it. I'm sure they did. <laughs> yeah. how'd, you go to, how'd you go for members that year? No, that was this, that was oh, for this, this year. year. Record oh, numbers. Record numbers. Yeah. So so actually worse. Wait until you see this current, Christmas. is it? Yeah, You've been Christmas. very quiet over there, Sam, during that. What did you What did you think of John's performance in that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sincerely, you, sh you don't have to say yes to no, everything. No, no, well, I did You're the coach show. of the club. Yeah, that's true. No, you did say yes to this show. Thank I, you very much. I said no a couple of times. No, yeah, it's <laughs> been very hard to get. One of the other, things, the other things I didn't know about you, and tell me if it's true, I hope it is, have you made a habit out of writing handwritten letters to players in the comp, not just players you play with or coach, uh, when they have milestone games? Yeah, uh, I started it when I first started coaching. I was uh, coaching against a lot of players that I'd played against that were obviously still continuing on with their careers. And uh, if they hit milestones, two or 250 games, um, you know, I had that much respect for them. I thought, I'm just going to write. Because I often had a story about playing against them, so I'd write a note just to say, well done. Yeah. And do you remember this day in this great game we had against each other or whatever? And, That's great. And just say, uh, you know, it's obviously a great great achievement. So what it started from that. What sort of feedback did you get from those players? I oh, know they really appreciate yeah. it, yeah. Um, you know, it's different. I still do it now, but they're, they're, let, they're just acknowledging players who have hit pretty significant yeah, milestones, and I'll acknowledge yeah. if they come through injuries. Can you send me a letter telling me how much fun you had on the show? <laughs> 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 point, what number really... shall we up to? Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got no uh, idea. Uh, uh, second yeah. last, <laughs> I, think, I, think, I, think, I think it is. Uh, you know what's wonderful, by the way? That, that yeah. uh, This show, that we've, you get to see all the different um, facets of, of our guest, on, of John Morsfold, the playing, the coaching, and, of course, as we mentioned earlier, the first ever... 
um, the first ever captain of a premiership team oh, in the on. West Coast Eagles. What, yeah. what a moment that would have been. And, of course, the traditional lap of honour. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me laugh. Hey, well, he learned. He, 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 learned. Did. he did learn He did learn his lesson. Yeah. That's as a player. And, of course, and once, yeah, once again, premiership coach as well. And in 2006, yeah. you were you're, uh, you're fortunate enough to... Um, to win the cup and uh, get presented with it, and Glenn was actually <laughs> he was he was he still had it. That's the that's, that's the one. That's, that's a Noe, Mickey. That's, that's the ninety two. That's the ninety two cup. cup. Yeah. No, no, he'd, he'd, learn, his? he'd learn his lesson. I'm off. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> what about that one, mate? The cup. Oh, yeah, no, well, similar. yeah, I know. And, and actually, because Jacko rang me and said, I'm getting to oh, present yeah. the cup. And I said, well, if we win it, well, if you're presenting it, because it was only presenting it to us if we won. Um, don't try and hold on to it. <laughs> I'd yeah. threaten him. So I just he, ask, he I, know, know you're in another club now, but you see how West Coast are travelling this year. They're playing some great football. They are. They're playing some really good football. They could go all the way. Do you still hold a candle for, for West Coast? Do you enjoy watching them play when it gets to this time of year? Yeah, I do, yeah. I, I obviously, I coached uh, a lot of the guys that are still playing yeah. there. So, um, you know, to see Shannon Hearn uh, get his first All-Australian this year was pretty special. Um, you know, Mark LaCroix, Josh Kennedy, those guys have been around for uh, a big part of while yeah. I was coaching there. So, you still like to see those guys playing good footy. Yep. Hey, John, it's a very special moment that we've arrived at in the show and it's always a joy to share it with people like you. Yeah, uh, strap right. yourself in. It's yeah, time for... You. Mix multi. Yeah. Come on! Come on. Uh, zero out of four again. Uh, we'll, go, we'll go right this week. Right. Cannot lose. Oh, yes, you Cannot can. lose. Oh, yes, what, was that? what was last year? Zero out of four. Yeah, That's what this segment should be called. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are you ready, you guys? Yeah. This is it. First lap, Aussie golfer Mark Leesham was asked a curly question at a presser this week. Uh, do you know what you don't know? Do I know what, sorry? What you don't know? <laughs> do I know what, sorry? Yeah. Do I know what I don't know? Yeah. No. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I'd like to wager Mark Leesham does know what he doesn't know. Right. He just doesn't want us to know he doesn't know. <laughs> right. Say it, say it. No. Say it. No. Toby. <laughs> Toby. I saw that out. Hey. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Massive. Can I that? No, you can't. Well done, by the way. But how about you take the Giants to beat the Pies, Toby Green on one leg, and I'll give you 235 for that Love one. Love it. Bag it up. I Second leg. I'll tell you what I know. <laughs> I know. I know that you don't know how to say Leishman. <laughs> 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 Toby, get back here. <laughs> what did I, I say? What did I say? Who knows him? what you said? Leishman. No I'll buy a vowel. <laughs> uh, hey, you've come on a good night. You, you really have. Can you write me a letter? <laughs> Can you write me a letter saying, sadly, I was there for the multi. And, uh, it's good, isn't it? Come on. Was, no, 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 was, no, are you hurrying up the multi? I'm sorry. How sorry. dare you? No, no, it's going that well. That is rude. All right. <laughs> <laughs> booing. <laughs> Where am I? Second leg. Second leg. Should we go to an end break? And come oh, back? second leg. Second break. This second guy. Second leg. Hey. hey. <laughs> no, I've lost my thought. <laughs> this guy. Have a look at this guy on the goalpost. Have a look. Four, three, two, one, go. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to wager that guy could win point of the year. <laughs> could, he, could, he, could he win it? Could, 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 win could win point of the year. Of the year. You can't have it. You can't have it. How about you take, Bol you beat, you take Baltimore to beat Cincinnati in the NFL and I'll give you $1.95. What do you reckon? No. <laughs> I'm OK with it. I'm right OK on. with it. All right. right. Uh, have a look at this bloke down the beach. <laughs> Oh, Here we go. What can go wrong here? <laughs> I'd like to wager that is the worst episode of Bondi Rescue ever. 
is the worst thing I've ever seen. You can't have that, but how about you take... Uh, That's from my home videos. No. <laughs> <laughs> number 11. Christmas. Ocean. Christmas. Number 11, Ocean Night. To win race 8 at Flemington, I'll give you 750. At least he was doing it between the flags, <laughs> yeah. which is the main thing. Yes, I'll take that. Good, you're on. All right, let's boot this baby home. Have a look at Jeff Kennett attending the twos and trying to keep a low profile. <laughs> wow. I'd like to wager that Jeff really wishes he hadn't worn his away strip. <laughs> can I have that? All right, can I, can I have this? I'd like to wager that, that is the second worst outfit I've ever seen worn to a game of the twos, apart from this one. <laughs> Big mould house. <laughs> Keeping a low profile. Is, is your old coach, John? Or... Do you reckon he'd regret that beret or whatever it is? Hey, uh, hey, hey, this is my second. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> <laughs> have you wagered something? I'm wagering everything. Uh, no, how about you take uh, the Hawks to beat the Ds? I'll give you to one. I'll one, take it. One, one to 39. Bag it up. What have we got? You got this one it comes up to. There it is. Oh, uh, yes. 14. Uh, to get on Mixed Multi, uh, go to the Sportsbet app. Look and you're an idiot if you don't get on it. No, you're not. You're Seriously. probably very sensible. It's in You'll the Mega section. you it for the rest of your life. On the app. If you do have a go, gamble responsibly, please. John, um, thanks so much for coming on. Please. Uh, yes, um, good on you. Enjoy having you on the show. Well done, this one. Good luck next year. We wish you all the very best. John Walsh on our very special guest. Don't go anywhere. A very, very special well, last tough. shout on the other Thank side of this. Leishman. Leishman? Yes. That's what I said. No, you didn't. You said Leisham twice. <laughs> you said Herbert. Uh, I said Herbert. <laughs> it's, it's Richard. Was it Richard? Yes. Anyway, uh, last shout in a moment. Just letting you know, a reminder, she's, fr she's a freak, she's a phenomenon, she's magnificent. And on Saturday in Sydney in the George Main Stakes, she goes through 27th in a row. Of course, I'm talking about Winx, and if you want to watch history hopefully get made... Glad you're talking about a horse. Uh, <laughs> midday here on 7. We're all looking forward uh, to this. Can I just say I've got a really bad feeling about Don't this. Don't say that. <laughs> He's due. Uh, no. He's due. Hey, hey. I hate to see that horse break a leg or something. Oh. <laughs> That's, you know... You know what I'm Huey, saying, Huey Bowman you know and Chris saying. Waller are big fans of this show. Mate, and I'm a big fan of them, and the, I could ride that horse side saddle to victory. <laughs> <laughs> I could. Anyway. Great horse. Yeah, what could go wrong? Nothing. That's it's going to be brilliant. Gee <laughs> Dear I think if you were right... <laughs> I'd regret saying that. <laughs> Please, I hope nothing goes wrong. Right. OK, last shout. Yeah. Uh, no, Sam, it's in your hands this week. I think what if you, you were riding that horse, by the way, I think that's the definition of top weight, by the way. <laughs> hey, uh, I wanted to say this. I wanted to say this. That it's been a tough week. It's been a tough week for many, many people. Well, the, the, oh, for the you in particular. Yeah, yes. the entertainment industry yeah. lost a giant oh, um, last Friday sure when the did. great Burt Reynolds uh, passed Bert. away. Tell so shout you, to Bert. It's a last shout to Burt. Well done, Burt. Um, great film. Mate, some of these, some of these classics. Some of these classics, for our younger viewers, these are called DVDs, by the way. You don't, uh, you don't just have to steal everything online. This is um, Cannibal Run 2. Oh, the masters. Cannibal, Cannibal Run. Run. Have a look at this. The longest yard's a cracker. Mm -hmm. This one, you're smoking the bandit smoking 1, the 2 band. and 3. This thing's so good. Bert's not even in 3. That's how good that is, right? <laughs> We're Sharky's I want to, so I want to say this too. This, 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 this book, say, uh, this book uh, would save my life. That's how much you put. That's, uh, that's a great book. And, uh, so I just wanted to... Also, it's one of the great cookie dusters. One of the great moustaches. It's great one of the moustaches. He was 82. His, his hair was a lot younger than that. <laughs> but, um, you know, early on the year, I had a sit down with Gary Ablett Jr. I do the remember. The little master. A sit down. You know, the, this, I don't think this even made it, but little master and I had a bit of reading material. This is way back then. <laughs> even then, he was always, like, I think I knew he was going to die, if you know what I mean. Like, it was. <laughs> even, look, Gary, that's just me and Gary Ablett reading Burt Reynolds, the great <laughs> films of Burt Reynolds. And I just wanted to leave you with so many great films Deliverance, Boogie Nights, you yeah. mentioned. Sharky's Machine. Sharky's Machine. But I just wanted to leave you with my, for me, the just the definitive um, scene <laughs> from Burt Reynolds. Cannibal Run with De <laughs> with Dom DeLuise. They're looking for a doctor. To, they're looking for a doctor to accompany them across country in the Cannibal Run. <laughs> Dom DeLuise has um, found the doctor and just... Toby! Enjoy the... Enjoy Burt's reaction. <laughs> GG! GG!
Hey, wait! I got the doc! No, wait! No! He's in the ambulance! Uh, this way! Oh! Turn! Before I open this, don't get your hopes up too high. I was pressed for time. No problem. <laughs> Thank you. Right. And to you, Sam. Yeah, that's the longest oh, life shout We were done about lichen time before we were done. <laughs> that's it. Thanks to John Warsfold and to Jimmy Jess. Yes. Thanks to you lot in the studio audience. Absolutely thank you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the brewery break. Carl Graff, good luck to the four teams going around this week. We'll be back next month to do it all again. Leishman. Leishman. I said Leishman. Leishman, great.